Okay. Uh, my name is Ryan Sakota. Um, I started about six and a half, seven years ago out in uh, uh, school hard knocks with uh, Jesse Hernandez. Uh, he actually gave my break in the business. Um, probably about a year or two there. Uh, then I came here to UPW. Um, then basically from there, I basically got a break in Japan with uh, uh, Shinya Hashimoto, his company, Zero One. Unfortunately, he passed away. And, um, I was actually in Japan during uh, when he passed away, and that uh, really bothered me because uh, he really was the, one of the main guys in the business who actually believed in me and gave me a shot, which other promotions didn't. And to this day, his loss was one of my, you know, it, to this day, I'm, st I'm still hurt by his loss. Um, but, you know, just like anything else, we got to move on. And uh, I'm sure, just like anything else, he would want everyone else to move on, too. So. How long, uh, or what was it like, uh, how was it like training to be a wrestler? Was it very hard? Uh, you know what? The one thing about wrestling is you have this dream to be a wrestler, at least for me. You know, every... The great thing about wrestling is everyone has a different story to tell. Everyone has a different reason why they got into business. Um, but the majority of the guys who are in the business and who are successful in the business, majority of them truly loved wrestling. And uh, that was my case. I, I love wrestling ever since a little kid. Um, my idol growing up was Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And uh, I could tell you tons of stories. I, I used to... Uh, you, you know, run around the house with a bandana around my head, and and uh, you know it was just one of those things where, when I was growing up, I grew up in an area mostly with uh, white guys, so it, it was kind of a way for me, uh, as an Asian American, to kind of uh, how do you say it, like ha have this. You know, he he was a way for me to get. I, I felt a little bit more accepted. You know, it, it's strange, but it's true. And he was able. You know, we would play play wrestle, and uh, we would always pick who we wanted to be as wrestlers. And I would always pick Ricky the Dragon every time. And you know, everyone would say, "Oh, I want to be Hulk Hogan." I said, "No, no, I want to be Ricky the Dragon." So I would give everyone, you know, the chop and do all that stuff. And and he was the main reason. And. Uh, to this day and right now he's with the WWE and uh, I've never met him but I'm just really waiting for the day where I can meet him and talk to him and absorb some knowledge from him so. um, at what age did you start having the dream to be a pro wrestler and what was that like like what was your was your ultimate dream like wrestle steamboat you know what? No, my ne <laughs> I never dreamt about wrestling Steamboat because I I've always wanted to be <laughs> Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. So I, I never wanted to be him. The guy who I always wanted to beat was uh, Randy Machman Savage because he had that big feud with with uh, Ricky the Dragon, and then later on he had that big feud with uh, Ric Flair, and some of the greatest matches of of all time were between Ricky the Dragon and Ric Flair, and of course, you know, WrestleMania 3, which was probably the greatest, uh, one of the greatest matches of all time, uh, uh, Ricky the Dragon versus the Macho Man, uh, that was probably, in my mind, one of the best matches of all time, um, but yeah, I, I, I never, you know, if it, anyone, it would probably be the Macho Man, who I always dreamt about <laughs> getting in there and fighting against. What was it like accomplishing your dream and, like, getting signed and being on TV at the WWE? You know what? The big thing is it never hit you. It didn't hit me um, until I got there. Until, you know, you they, you know you get the phone call. John Laurinaitis calls and says, Hey, Ryan, you know, da, 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 you know we'd like to offer you a deal, da, da, da. And I, I was just... I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, all that time, it was probably at that time, probably about five years, five and a half, you know, years 
uh, before I got the call. And once when I got the call, it really didn't hit me until I got into my car and drove from California all the way to Louisville. And as I was driving down to Louisville, that's when it all absorbed. And I absorbed it all. And that's when it would just it just hit me right there. I'm like, man, I can't believe it. You know, I, I, I you know, I got a job. But that was my biggest problem, that I almost felt content with just having the job and not trying to excel and try to go to that next level. And that is the one thing that I learned the most is that you cannot be content in this business. And I almost think that that was my biggest downfall was being content. Um, in the WWE, like, what were, were, were there any, like, like political problems like with the office uh, the you know what I stayed far away from that um, you know the one thing about the business is you have to start you, you know you have to learn to uh, stand up for yourself that's the one thing that I learned uh, when I got there um, there were guys that uh, that, that you know that, that try to do ribs and do all that but you gotta you know obviously to the veterans you can't you know you can't go and and and, and make a big deal out of it. you kind of just have to brush it off and laugh it off and say okay you got me and 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 that's it and move on um i was very fortunate uh i i never really got into that political game um to this day i have a lot of friends who are still there and um you know, I, I miss, I miss, uh, you know, I miss those guys, and I, I really, really want to go back. And it's, you know, hopefully, it's a matter of time. So, yeah. What's it like? Uh, or maybe you could explain why exactly you left the WWE. Uh, well, what happened was, and this is obviously my my prob or my fault. Um, before I got picked up, I I had real serious back problems. Um, but in this business, um, there's a difference between working hurt and working injured. And I learned that from Booker T. Um, and he, he really smartened me up. But by that time, it was too late. Um, you know, he, he told me, he goes, you know, you have nothing more to prove. And, you know, everybody knows that, that you know, your back is, is completely shot. And here you are still doing all these matches and you could barely walk and uh, he said bro you know there's a difference between working hurt and working injured and he goes I guarantee you no one here thinks you're a pussy <laughs> but that in the back of my mind that was the biggest thing is that I wanted the respect from the boys and uh, uh, and, and that was probably my downfall I, I should have probably gotten help uh, I should have went to a doctor earlier and got you know maybe there was something they could have done but by the time I got the MRI uh, I mean they couldn't believe it I mean the the nerves were completely on top of the disc and they were, they couldn't believe it because it was so bad that they felt that the nerve could have been severed and I could have had permanent nerve damage so that's how bad it was it got and uh, you know so uh, when they found out that I had to do the surgery um, what happened was then, you know, about a week went by and then John Laurinaitis called me and told me about my release. Um, I was cool with it. I understood business is business. I, I don't have any, you know, I, you know, I don't have any problem with that. You know, I understand the business. And now it's just a matter of me coming back. You know, I, I've ten and a half months of rehab that I was doing. Um, and now I'm back 100%. Actually, now I feel better. Then I first when I first started wrestling because I you know six seven years ago I always had some form of back pain but now I, I haven't had any form of back pain at all so uh, maybe it might have been a blessing in disguise that got released you know I don't know but you know everything happens for a reason and um, you know I'm just excited right now I, I've never been this excited in my life because now I had a taste of it. I had to taste what it was like to walk in front of 15,000 people. And believe me, once when you experience that, you're hooked. You're a junkie. Just like I remember I saw a DVD with Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know. You know, 
he, you know, he calls himself a junkie because he, you know, it's that, it's the reaction of the fans. It's it's coming out, and that's that adrenaline walking to the ring, and it's just there's nothing like the, nothing like it in the world. And uh, you know, I, I want that more than anything in the world right now. That's my number one goal is to get back there. So. What does a wrestler like you have to do to get back there? Like, what are your plans? Well, obviously, durability is an issue. Um, they told me, you know, obviously, you know, they told me the door's open for you to come back, but, you know, obviously you got to prove your durability, which I totally understand because liability-wise and everything. So I have to prove to them that I'm durable, that I'm able to work again. Um, it's going to take some time. I understand. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, but I've been going to Japan, and Japan has been doing really well for me, so I'm excited with that. And, um, you know, that's just, uh, you know, another step, step back up to WWE, so. What's it like wrestling in Japan, and how does it compare to the United States? Um, I will say in Japan, work rate, it's a lot harder. Um, uh, everything is a little bit more, a little bit more snug. Forearms, kicks, um, everything is a little, little tighter, and um, which is good because uh, I, you know, for me, my style, I'm a little bit more geared to work that style. So um, uh, I, I just think right now, I think that's a good fit for me right now in Japan. Um, how about uh, like the creative process in wrestling? Like, do you feel that that's something that's very uh, like it's headed in the right direction, or do you think it used to be better? Or I don't want to put you on the spot or anything, but well, I'll like, tell you this: I think the one thing what's lacking is competition, and uh, you know there was a lot of things that creatively back in the day that they were able to do because you had competition so they would obviously you know obviously you remember the whole WWF or WWE sorry would go and invade WCW knock on their door at their show I mean th that kind of stuff was great you know and uh, you know get on the stick and talking about oh you know da 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 you know he couldn't outwork me da 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 it was great because there was so much more that, that you know creatively that they were able to do because there was another company that you can go and rib on <laughs> you know so that that was the one thing that I think which in my belief creatively they they kind of it got shortened a bit because now there's they're such a monopoly and it's only in here instead of you know competition here competition there um, so Creatively, I know for a fact they're trying their best, uh, but it's hard. It's hard because 20 years of wrestling, uh, WWE 21 years, uh, and I mean, obviously, you can't keep running the same story over and over and over. You got to switch it up, and that's the hard part. It's just because you know they've been running for so long and they've been running TV for so long that to come up with new ideas and new things you know it, I, I wouldn't want to be them because creatively man it, it's it's tough I'm sure those guys have sleepless nights um, trying to think of ideas um, but you know I don't blame them I mean right now they, they got their hands full they're doing the best they can How about the, the internet? Like, oh, internet? Um, you know what, what I realized about the internet? That at first, uh, I never paid attention to the internet. And I never really cared what people had to say or whatever, criticism. But what I learned, that the internet is such a dynamic tool such a dynamic tool as far as promoting the wrestling business 
I mean, guys and guys over in India, guys over you know all across the world can access wrestling and read about wrestling all the way from over there. And that was the one big thing that I did not concentrate uh, enough on. Um, now, criticism is criticism. You know, you take it with a grain of salt. Um, if someone says, oh, you suck, well, you know, that's your opinion, you know. But I, I think, in my opinion, I know a lot of people don't like it because most of the times they bash on the product. They bash on this. But it, it's to me, it's a great tool to actually maybe sometimes work work. Uh, some angles, you know, work some different angles through, through internet. I th- I think it's, uh, you know, to me, I, I like it. I like the idea, you know. But if you take criticism badly, I can see on how people truly don't enjoy it. But in my opinion, I have my my skin is so thick that it bounces right off. So anything bad written about me, it just bounces right off. So I, it doesn't bother me. 